three tales, two betrayals, and one epic episode. Let's break it all down on Sweetwater Secrets. Welcome back, River Babes. I'm your hostess with the mostest, Leanne Aguilera, and this is your Sweetwater Secrets After Show, for Riverdale, episode 307, chapter 42, The Man in Black, aka our special three-part episode. Now, I was going to dress as Archie this week, but considering he wasn't wearing a shirt for most of this episode, I decided that wasn't a good idea. And since all of our characters were split up this week, I like this shirt because it has all of our favorite Riverdalian names on it together. And of course, I'm praying for you, Betty. Thank you so much. Now, fashion secrets aside, let's now focus on this episode because today I'm bringing you exclusive answers from KJ Appa about Archie and Jughead's future on the road. Plus, I'm unleashing my brutal thoughts in seven seconds in heaven and word vomiting everywhere in hisses and kisses. But first, we need to address this episode's most shocking twists and turns in the blue and gold breakdown. Now, episode 307 was broken up into three stories, and we started off with our most bromantic journey with Jughead and Archie. Or should I say... I'm Cal. This is Biff. Now, the boys have been robbed while riding the rails, and they stumbled onto a farm looking for help. But before you start to freak out, this wasn't the farm, just a farm, with two gun-wielding sisters who were mysteriously all alone. Shoot him, Gracie. In exchange for some help around the farm, which Archie happily agreed to because he loves any excuse to be shirtless, Lori offered the boys some food, a place to stay, and a whole lot more than that. Now, while Archie was doing that, Jughead wandered into the small deserted town of Athens and noticed a bunch of those strange symbols, a mural devoted to the Gargoyle King and some girls playing G&G. &G. Now, according to this delightfully creepy old lady, all of the men in this town are working in a prison that's creating a drug-laced fizzle rocks. Yes, the same candy that young Hiram introduced to the Midnight Club all those years ago. Fizzle rocks, they're new. Archie stupidly told Lori his real name and the fact that he was hiding from Hiram Lodge. And before he could ask for a second plate of eggs, she gave me a frickin' heart attack and did this. <laughs> Turns out Hiram Lodge is officially the man in black. He owns the town of Athens and is blackmailing all the men to work in his prison and create batches of fizzle rocks because okay. And Archie, who was being used as bait, was freed by Jughead and then shared his not so brilliant plan. I can kill him. But Jughead smartly convinced his friend to abandon this ludicrous thought, and he came up with a much better escape plan instead. We'll go see my mom. Veronica's story was a lot less action-packed. Now, in an effort to make more money for the speakeasy, V contacted her old friend Elio and convinced him to help her throw a one-night-only casino night. The house always wins, right? Long story short, Elio betrayed Veronica. Shocker. The smarmy casino kingpin had rigged the tables and was looking to take all the chips for himself because he knew that Veronica was no longer under her daddy's protection. I heard you went in on speaking terms. But we all know one thing, never underestimate a lodge. Veronica challenged Elio to a winner-takes-all game of blackjack and she defied the odds and came away as the night's big winner. 21. <laughs> Miss Lodge wins. Turns out Hiram had secretly tipped off Veronica to Elio's nefarious intentions and suggested that she hire a card dealer who would stack the deck in her favor. And unfortunately, it looks like Veronica is starting to warm back up to her father's icy ways. Deep, deep down, maybe my dad's not so bad. Oh, and it seems like Sheriff Mineta is dead. They don't know for sure because it was decapitated. And the hands were sawed off. And on that cheery note, let's venture into the dark and dangerous halls of the Sisters of Quiet Mercy for Betty's story, which was definitely my favorite because we got to hear our blonde beauty's internal thoughts and they were delightfully vicious. Tell me what you see, Elizabeth. A dead body, you idiot. I see a toy. And while she played the part of a good little patient, Betty was secretly investigating and discovered that the sisters are pushing drug-laced fizzle rocks on the girls trapped inside. Every patient gets candy for good behavior. But while Betty was trying to avoid a psychedelic trip, her obnoxious new roomie, Ethel, was always lurking, tattletailing, and intentionally pushing Betty's buttons. Betty. I don't think Jughead's into you anymore. Betty decided to sweetly deceive Ethel to continue her snooping, and she discovered that Hiram Lodge, AKA the Man in Black, was secretly meeting with Sister Woodhouse, and oh hey, there's Claudius Blossom. He's alive, I don't care. Betty faked a seizure in order to sneak her way into the infirmary and to get the secret scoop hidden in her file. And then she dashed down to the door that Veronica and Tony used to help Cheryl escape last season, but there was just one super massive problem. <laughs> 
The nuns captured Betty, forced Fizzle Rocks down her throat, and then threw her into the Gargoyle King's chambers. By the end of the episode, Betty was no longer her snarky self. She's now fully under the Gargoyle King's spell. My king, my savior, guide me through the night. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed this episode and love that it's setting up the fact that we're going to be meeting Jughead's mom, who is played by actress Gina Gershon in the next episode. So here's a little tease straight from KJ Appa about what we can expect from Mama Jones. Gina's coming to be Jug Mama, as yeah. we call her, yeah. I've done a couple scenes with her. Um, her first scenes were with me and Jughead. She's great, she's epic. Yeah. And she actually worked with Skeet 15 years ago, so they saw each other for the first time again last week. Are you excited to meet Jughead's mama? Tell me in the comments below, and now let's keep things moving with Seven Seconds in Heaven. Now since our core four characters were split up this week, there isn't much to report on the romance front, but I would love to highlight this super sweet voicemail that Juggy left Betty. Just trying you again, hoping you're okay. I love you. Poor Jug doesn't even know that his girl has been gargoyle napped by a bunch of drug pushing nuns, but I can't wait to see his furious reaction when he eventually learns the truth. And while Betty was in the Sisters of Quiet Gargoyles, it was fun to see her thoughts about Ethel's delusional obsessions about Jughead. Things got pretty hot and heavy in the bunker. This psycho bitch. Oh, he definitely told me about how you blackmailed him into kissing you. As for Archie, well, I already showed you that he was getting hot and heavy with farm girl Lori. That's on my list of woes, yes. And just as I was about to explode with rage, he sweetly surprised me and then pushed her off and said this. There's a girl back home. Even though we're not together anymore, I still love her. But over with Veronica, I don't know about you, but I was picking up some vibes between her and Reggie. Were you getting those as well? Tell me in the comments. But now let's sweep aside these romance whisperings and shout out the cutest and cattiest moments in Hisses and Kisses. My first and biggest hiss, once again, goes to Hiram Lodge. He is the only character that we saw in all three of these stories, and honestly, I wish I hadn't. Are you angry about something? I'm frustrated that he's the man in black because it just seems way too convenient, and I'm tired of him hogging all the screen time. Hisses to farm floozy Lori. First you hop on the saddle of the first boy you see, and then you smack him over the head with the world's biggest frying pan. Honestly, girl, what was the point of you, huh? You just came here to twist the knife, is that it? Also, side note, who else first thought that Lori and her gunslinging sister were related to Evelyn Evernever? They share the same little buggy eyes. I was hoping you'd say that. Hisses to Elio for trying to pull one over on Veronica, although I'm... Not really surprised. And to Veronica for starting to act more and more like her father. So long as you're the last woman standing. And although I always enjoy these three-part episodes, I'm sending hisses to the fact that we haven't seen a lot of our other series regular characters in a long time. Cheryl has been virtually MIA for weeks, and don't even get me started on Josie and Tony. Um, hello? What happened? Also, aren't these kids supposed to be in school? How many days can you miss at Riverdale High before you get kicked out? Oh, and hisses to Ethel's delusional behavior and obsessions with Jughead. We're gonna be a ship. Ethel head? In your dreams. <laughs> Good luck with that one, Ethel. You're gonna need it. But I will give a tiny kiss to this random dead ped line, because I couldn't help but bust up laughing. But you really should take the candy. It's super delicious. Fully switching over to kisses, this first one is going to Archie's wild hair. The fact that he admitted that he still loves Veronica and to Jughead for keeping it real with his BFF with this sweetly intentioned mega burn. No offense, but Betty took down a serial killer last year. You can't go for five minutes without being kidnapped or getting the crap kicked out of you. Burn! Kisses to how quickly this episode seemed to move and to the really amazing shots that showed just how creepy the Gargoyle King's chamber were. And my biggest kiss of the episode goes to Betty's internal thoughts. Forget Jughead's ominous episode introductions. I want more of Betty's voiceovers because they're snarky and sensational and they remind me a lot of young Alice. Bite me. Dude. Can you bite me? Oh my god! Shh. And that wraps it up for this week's after show for 307. Now check back to Sweetwater Secrets next week for episode 308, chapter 43, Outbreak, aka our Riverdale winter finale. Cause guess what, River Babes? I have a special surprise coming your way. Brand new interviews with the Riverdale cast. There's going to be so many delicious and exclusive goodies from the cast that you're gonna think you're high on fizzle rocks. But you're not, drugs are bad. 
Until then, if you've had a fun time bouncing around from story to story with me this week, please give this video a like, hit subscribe, and then do my absolute favorite part, head on down to the comments to tell me your thoughts. Are you frustrated slash disappointed slash annoyed that Hiram is the men in black? What do you think Jughead's mom is gonna be like? Is there any hope for Betty now that she's seen the Gargoyle King? And which of the three tales did you enjoy the most? Rank them in the comments for me below, and I'll see you next time, River Babes. Kisses to you.